Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm starting a theory talking about general statistical concepts rather than R programming specifically. So in this series I won't be mentioning R programming or any programming. I'm just going to be talking about the concepts that I always brush up against in the R programming videos but never really explain in that much detail. I have about 65 of the pages on my website, datpedar.com, right now, and you can get to them under resources and uh, foundational statistics. That's basic statistical concept with none of the R programming that I'm sure you've all come to know and love. Okay, so I'm starting basic with the mean. So the mean is a measure of central tendency or the middle average value of a set of data. And there's a few other methods of central tendency, median and mode, that I will talk about in subsequent videos. But mean is often a, a very good first step in looking at central tendency. Okay, so the mean, as opposed to the median and mode, uses all of the data in the calculation. So what you do is you sum up all the values in this notation we call it x and you divide by the number of values you added up which we call n you could also see this as the sum of x to i um yeah and so there's two different ways to think about the mean the population means and sample means so this greek letter mu is a population mean it's a value that we very often do not know, but we want to get at with a sample. So this, this is like uh, the average height of all the, all people in the world. We cannot measure everyone in the world. We could never know the average height of all people in the world objectively. What, what we can do is we can sample and get an estimate of that average height which we would call x bar. That is the computational average of a sample. Sometimes we will know the population mean if we define our population to be quite small, like uh, average CPA of psychology undergraduate at the College of Thompson. When we arbitrarily define our population to be that small, we don't need x bar we can just directly compute the average mu. Okay. So, you go to the calculated mean. You, you take your data. You do not need to order it. Just add them all up. So, and when you add these five numbers up, you get 400. And to calculate the mean, we take that sum and divide it by the number of of numbers, we added up 5, and we get 80. So, you can also call the mean an expected value. And, in statistics, that's just a fancy way of saying, knowing nothing else about the data, what, what, do, what would I expect the next value from the sample to be? So, for this particular sample, I'd say the expected value is 80. So, if we had a sixth number, my best guess for that next value in the thing would be 80. That would not always hold, but it's a, it's a reasonable best guess. 81 would be slightly worse, 79 would be slightly worse. That's not always true. If we, if we look at the data with a histogram and we find that it's bimodal, for example, and most of the data points around 60 and most of the data points around 100, and the mean happens to even out at 80, 80 would be a bad guess. You would pick 80 even though most of the values aren't 80. They're 60 or 100, and the mean value happens to be 80. For example, if we had like a an underlying variable, for example, sex, if if men are 100 on whatever measure and women are 60, 80 is a bad approximation than both of them. 
But if the data is approximately normally distributed, meaning not bimodal and not significantly skewed, it is the best guess. Okay, so the mean is important because it provides a standard way of looking at uh, the central tendency in a variety of data sets. And it's like the expected value I said, where, you, where the data is generally centered around, assuming it's approximately normal. Okay, so I kind of brushed up against the limitations of the mean. It works when you have data that really fits it. You don't have extreme values. You don't have a bunch of values that are high. For example, 200 in that data set that are, uh, are influencing your mean to go really high. Like... Uh, we had a value of 200 and then put the mean out at 100 where the data is not really around 100. And of course, if you have multiple modes, a bimodal data set or a multimodal data set, a mean may not necessarily reflect the values you would see in the data set. But the mean is a good first step and Combined with the median, it can be a, a good way of getting a quick look at where your data is at. Okay, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.